Let's pick up some of this with Henry Newman, director of the think tank Open Europe. He joins me now in the studio. So, Henry, Italy has had 64 governments since the end of the Second World War. If you're an Italian voter, your head must be spinning. Why so many? Well, Italy's actually been quite politically stable since the Second World War. I think we had the domination of the uh, Christian Democrats for a lot of post-war Italian history. But I think what's happening now, it's certainly it's not unusual to have political flux in Italy, but this is pretty unprecedented. It looks like a real constitutional collapse might be on the, on the verge. Uh, the president, as, you, as the, uh, we just heard in the package, vetoed the appointment of a Eurosceptic minister into the finance position. And that's led to a complete breakdown with the two main parties who were the victors of the elections back in March. And the president did say, though, that he would have accepted that Eurosceptic in another position, just not in the finance position. He wanted, he said, to keep the market stable. Okay, but the, the president has a duty under the constitution in Italy to essentially be a national unity figure. It's not up to him to make determinations about policy. He can, of course, say that somebody has a conflict of interest that cannot be resolved or somebody else is being appointed under nepotism or is inexperienced for the role. And that has happened occasionally in the past. But this seems pretty new. And as you were hearing again in the package, five-star movement, this sort of uh, anti-establishment movement which topped the polls in the recent elections is calling for the impeachment of the president. And that, you know, that has happened before, but it's, it's pretty extreme. And again, we've had a technocrat in Italy before, but when there were previously technocrats, they were supported by the parliament. And it, does, it just seems totally unlikely that this new appointment will be able to win a majority in the two houses of the Italian parliament. Henry, if the country does go back to the polls in a few months' time, it, what indication is there that any of this will be resolved by another election? Well, we just don't know. I think, as, as, as we're hearing it again, some people are suggesting that this could now become a referendum on the euro. But the danger is, too, that it becomes a referendum on democracy itself, that we're hearing some very, very inflamed language coming out of Italy that reminds me of the language that we heard in Greece during the euro crisis previously, where there were talks of a sort of Berlin-driven coup. Um, and, of course, this, to a degree, has happened previously in Italy. We saw before that a uh, combination of Merkel and Sarkozy uh, colluded to remove Berlusconi from office. So it's not a totally unprecedented position again. But I think the danger is that Italians feel, even liberal Italians who previously might have shunned the Five Star and the League for various reasons, they might decide that actually this is their way out and this is their last chance with Brussels to send a signal that they don't want to go on with the status quo. Henry Newman, thanks very much indeed. So all, ups for gra all up for grabs still, Celia. Let's have a quick look at some of the day's other news now. In a state of emergency has 